that you're here today to celebrate Father's Day with us. We have an amazing service planned today. We've already done this thing twice. God has moved in each service. I'm expecting him to do the same thing, but we got a little extra flavor in the house because uh, Consume students are back from poor. I heard, I heard like 20 students got baptized yesterday. That's pretty cool. God's doing amazing things in our young people. I'm so excited about. But here's the deal. It's Father's Day. We got a lot of fun, a lot of craziness going on. But right now, this is our moment to connect with God. Whether you're here in the room or you're joining us online, this is your opportunity not to spectate. I know these guys are talented, but this is not a concert. This is a praise and worship service where we give our best to God. And so I just really encourage you right now to lay aside any distractions or lay aside any of the, the stuff or the issues that maybe you were facing this week and press in to the presence of God and get all that he has for you today. Let's worship together.
Hallelujah. We do have a baptism this morning. Can we clap our hands? Oh man, I think we have we may have a testimony this morning. So if you don't mind, give a hand to Mr. Miranda. Come on up, sir. Come on, give him a hand. Yeah. Now help me pronounce your name. Solas Dean. Solas Deans. Everybody say Solas Dean. You're helping me out. All right, come on. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Father's Day. So my testimony today, um, on March 29th to be exact, I got pulled over for a DOI, which was probably one of the scariest nights of my life. Um, uh, after that day, I decided to give my life to God, but I didn't fully commit. As soon as I felt the peace, I went back to my old ways. I still kind of continued to drink. Um, I ended up getting pulled over again for a suspended license. After that night when my parents bonded me out, I came home and I can hear God speaking to me. Just, uh, they just gave me the number three, give me three days. Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, past three days, just water and food. I mean water and that's it. Um, in those three days, I've never felt more alive, and I felt reborn. And then I just felt I was ready to get baptized. And I didn't know what day I wanted to get baptized. I prayed, and it just made sense. Father's Day. Um, <laughs> Father's Day to be reborn and have a fresh start for my Father in Heaven. And I'm ready to give my life to God. <laughs> going after that <laughs> so he, he's going to be going uh, in the back to get baptized and we're going to celebrate with him but one way we can go on I heard pastor just say he said thank you Jesus we can just thank God for his goodness we can thank God for being awesome we can thank him for being wonderful so let's continue to worship You are here. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop you working. You never stop working. You never stop. feel good. just heard the testimony. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way you can testify to sing that say, and we're standing here only because you made a sing it again say you you made a way thank you Jesus our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over 
I wish we had time to pass around this microphone to get all the testimonies in the room. We just heard one, but I wish we had time to get all the testimonies. How many can testify that God is a way maker? Come on, how many can testify that there is none like our God? Can you testify to that? There is none like our God. Yeah. 
let's, try, let's try that again. All right. So if you need some clarity on, on what's happening is the, the people in this room are not singing a song. Okay, can, can, can we just clarify that? Like sometimes you come just sing a song. Now this was, John said he wished he could give everybody the microphone so they could share a testimony. We didn't have to share the microphone because we just collectively all just shared our testimony. Because right? that's what this was. It wasn't a song. It was a testimony. And we're, we're loud and we're shouting and we're dancing. And we're crazy because we have been there. We've been in that spot where it was, there was no hope. We've been in that place where we looked around and we're like, there is no one that can do anything about this. And then God just walked in with his finger up like, um, <laughs> I can. <laughs> I can do something about that. Because I can turn graves into gardens. I can turn bones into armies. I can turn your shame into glory. And that right there is enough to make anybody get excited. And so here's the thing. If you're in the room and that wasn't your testimony yet, I'm gonna pray for you in a moment. Because here's the thing. If he did it for them, he can do it for you. If he did it before, he can do it again. And so if you're in this place right now or you're worshiping with us online and you're in a place where you're saying to yourself, there's no hope. I don't see the glory, all I feel is the shame. There's no garden here, it's just a graveyard. You are right where you're supposed to be. Because in just a moment, everything's gonna change. And you can share in the joy and the excitement and the noise and the, <laughs> the chaos of all of this because it's going to be your testimony as well that God is going to turn that thing around in your life so Father God we just worship you right now we praise you, we adore you we just we come into your presence God in awe of you and Father for some of us we're in this room and we are celebrating the testimony of what you have already done in our lives that God you have made a way when there was no way you have done the impossible in our lives the biggest pain in our lives has turned into the greatest triumph. Our shame and our defeat has turned into glory. God, you have done things in our lives that we can't even put into words to express. And God, right now, as we celebrate that, we also bring before you the people that are still in that desert season, the people that are still experiencing the grave, the people that are still experiencing the shame, and Father, right now, we just pray that the same presence that moved in our lives would move in theirs. That God, that you would begin to move through their life, even right now in this moment. That people would leave this building different than the way they came in. And that you would just inject hope into the room right now. That whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, that you would inject hope into the situation. That even when there's no one else that can do anything, there's always one. There's still you. Even when we can't, you can. And so, Father, we declare in faith that you're going to move in the lives of people in this room and online, and that we're all going to rejoice in the testimony of the Waymaker. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Man, that's what I call fun. Right, that, that, it's good to be at church today. Here, here's what I need you to do. Say hi to somebody. Give them a high five, fist bump. Smile at them real big. Let them know you're glad to see them. I'm glad to see you, Kara. Whoo, man. All right, let's see if we can figure out what we're doing the rest of this service. All right, so <laughs> we are so glad that you're here this wonderful Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads in the room. All the dads online, you guys are amazing. I love CLC dads. There's just you're, there's something different about dads at CLC than dads anywhere else. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm excited because you guys are awesome. And you're rocking your Bears jerseys, some Cubs. Um, it's all right. It's still Chicago. At least it's not a Packers jersey, right? 
All right, but here, here's the deal. If you're new to CLC, I just want to take a moment to welcome you. So glad that you're in the building today for, for all that God is doing. Look, I know you got a lot of places you could be uh, at 1235 on Father's Day afternoon, but you decided to come and worship with us here at CLC, and we're just honored by that. And so here's the deal. If you're new in the room or online, we want to connect with you. And we found the best way to do that is if you would grab your cell phone and just text the word welcome to 708-998-4516. We just want the opportunity to connect with you, answer any questions you might have about the church, give you a little bit more information and, and just be there for you. We, we don't want you to be a nameless face in the crowd. So please take the, the opportunity now to connect with us. For everybody else that calls CLC home, you know what time it is? It's offering time. Come on, we, we should get just as excited about that as what just happened on this stage a moment ago. Uh, and so, and, and I love this church because it's such a generous church. In fact, we're in the, the starting point of our all-in campaign. We're making some major renovations to the building. We're improving some things to reach people online better. And we're doing some things in our community that are just so exciting. And so far in just the first three weeks of this campaign, you guys have already given over $30,000 to all-in. We got a long way to go still, but we're so glad that you're participating in this. You're joining with us. If you'd like to give today, there's multiple ways that you can give in uh, online or using the boxes in the back. While you're preparing to give, though, can I tell you a, a weird story? I, I love weird stories. Like, I, I don't know about you, but like when you learn that piece of information that just seems so off the wall weird, like I love that. I live for those moments. And so can I share one with you today? Thank you. You're the first service that was excited for my story. Uh, and so here, here's the deal. So uh, in the Middle Ages, the church did some weird stuff, okay? It was, it was like, a, it was kind of a dark time. It was, it was a weird time for the church. And so they would actually hire mercenaries to go out and fight battles. It's kind of weird. Can you imagine Pastor Jerry hiring a bunch of mercenaries to like go out and take care of business? Uh, but that's what the church would do back in the, in the Middle Ages. But they, they had this thing so backwards. It was so weird. They wanted to make sure that the mercenaries they hired were good Christian men, so they would baptize them before they would, like, send them off to kill people. <laughs> Told you, it's a weird, weird moment in the church. But what was so fascinating to me is I found out that when, when these mercenaries would be baptized, they would hold their sword out of the water. It was their way of saying, okay, we're cool with all this. We'll give you the church. We'll give God everything that we are except my sword. Because like I need to be the one in control of my sword. Like God can use all of me except for that one little thing. And I thought that was so bizarre and that was so weird, but then there was like this little bit of conviction in me where it was like, Brent, have there been times in your life when you tried to hold something out of the water of baptism? That, that you, were, you were dedicating all that you were to God, but there was just this little piece that you're like, God, you can have everything except that. And I wonder if for a lot of us, maybe it's this thing right here that we try and hold up out of the water. This is my wallet. And I wonder if, if there's some people in the room that maybe, you know, you, you're, you're in a place where you're like, God, you can use all of me except for my bank account. Like, I need that. I got to pay the bills. I got to take care of the family. They're hungry. You know, we got to do stuff. So God, you can have everything that I am all my strength, all my energy, all my attention, all my desires, you can have all of it, but let me hang on to this one. And here's the thing about that. God wants all of you, like every last drop, every last bit. And when we go into the waters of baptisms, as you saw today, like it's a glorious moment. It's this exciting moment as, as we're making this declaration to God and to the rest of the world that I am yours. Every last piece of me, all that I am is yours. But if we hold something back, then that's not a true statement anymore. When we say, God, I love you, and I'm going to do all that you tell me to do except for this area of finance, I'm going to hold on to that myself. That's, that's kind of like my kids coming to me and saying, Dad, I love you, and they ain't never clean their room when I tell them to. That's... It's not love, that's not obedience. And, and what I believe that God is calling us to is not to hold anything back. That with our baptism, with our dedication to God, there should be no asterisks, right? It shouldn't be, I give all that I am except for this, this fine print over here that is mine. And so I just wanted to plant that seed 
for you guys today that you would wrestle with that and, and see if maybe there's an area of your life, maybe it's your finances, maybe it's something else that you've been holding back from God. And he's calling you today to give him everything. And so we're gonna give in just a moment. I wanna let you know about a couple of things uh, that are happening in July. July is gonna be exciting at CLC. Uh, in fact, it kicks off with more baptisms, right? That is, how cool, this is like the day of baptisms, right? We got consumed, had like 20 kids baptized, soul got baptized, we, awesome stuff is happening. Well, on July the 7th, that is the first Wednesday of July, we're gonna have baptisms and barbecue out in the parking lot. Cause what goes better with baptisms than barbecue, right? And so it's just gonna be a glorious combination. In fact, my boys were baptized at the last uh, baptism of barbecue that we did, and it was just such an incredible time. I was so excited about that. And uh, I know that this, this experience is gonna be life-changing for a lot of you. It's gonna be a lot of fun as we celebrate, but also as we baptize. And so if you would like to be baptized that night, it starts at seven o'clock. You can text the word BBQ, barbecue BBQ to 708-998-4516. Uh, and that way we can get you scheduled for that night. That's in two weeks. Uh, and then three days later is serve day. And so Serve Day is a kind of a, a nationwide recognized day where churches all over the country partner together with their communities to just serve, to do good in the neighborhoods around them. And so as always, CLC is going to be participating in Serve Day this year. And we've got a lot of different opportunities for you to serve uh, right here in the southwest sub south suburbs as well as the western suburbs as well as in Blue Island. Uh, for more information about all that or to get registered to be able to serve, why don't you text the word serve to that same number I've been giving you all morning, 708-998-4516. That way we can get uh, some information to you. This is a great opportunity to uh, serve with your life group. We're really encouraging life groups to get together, to take on a project as a team uh, and do some good in our community. So I'm really excited about that as well. And now, before Pastor Jerry comes uh, for Father's Day today, please enjoy my suffering on the screens. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I'm Carlton, I'm here with Brent and Jason, and we're gonna eat some hot wings and talk about being dads. All right, so how this is gonna work, we have three wings with three different levels of spice from wow that's hot to this probably should be legal <laughs> so wow. in between eating each wing i'm going to ask some questions and uh hopefully you guys can handle it now the one thing is all of clc is going to be judging your manliness with this so are you guys ready i'm ready all right sweet all right so the first wing we have is the classic hot it's ranked three out of five on the heat scale um, and then uh, let's dig in. Okay, first question. Give me your best dad joke. So a fish walks into a bar, bartender looks at him and says, wait a minute, how'd you do that? <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> what was worse, the wing or the joke? They're pretty even right about now. <laughs> Are you sweating already, Jason? I'm okay. I'm just... All right, let's ramp up the heat here. The next wing we have is the mango habanero. It's ranked four or five on the heat scale. So let's dig in. What did you have as a child that kids don't have today? Patience. Yeah. My kid, the internet goes down for like 30 seconds and his world has ended. And I tried to explain to him dial up internet the other day and it just, it didn't, it didn't go. He has no idea what AOL is. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> we had neighborhood Olympics. Like, it would be a bunch of kids on the block. Yes. We would go outside, and we were playing all kind of games. Like, it's, like, torture to try to get kids to go out nowadays. But we would just be out all day on our bikes, jumping over hedges, just doing all kind of stuff, racing, playing football in the streets. <laughs> so that's okay. a great transition into the last <laughs> wing. <laughs> So we have the atomic wing, and it's ranked five of five on the heat scale. But wait, we're not just going to have an atomic wing alone. We're going to add the scorpion pepper sauce at one million Scovilles. And it's going to be awesome. Um, heat, the end. 
it. All right, you guys ready? No. Let's do it anyway. No, I'm not. Come on. <sighs> All right. You got this, Jason. Oh, yeah, that's good. Jason, just went for it. All right. No. <laughs> it's like fire. Shut up in my mouth. Mm -hmm. It gets hotter. It gets hotter. Is it supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. All right. First question. <laughs> Most embarrassing dad moment. This one right here. This is it. This is. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. That is not. That is not normal. <clears throat> Most <coughs> embarrassing dad moment. Yeah, this is it. Here. It's uh, this moment right now. I am so sorry to my children. Listen, uh, Jayla and I don't even know their names. I don't even remember. <laughs> Jenna. I just hate that Carlton is just breathing a little Jillian. bit funnier, but like nothing else. Yeah, it's, Jayla. It was great. He's not Actually, sweating. I, I am so sorry. As a of fact. Uh, Please respect me after this. Okay, so I'll move on to the next question. Then. <laughs> What's your best dad advice? Uh, don't eat hot wings. <laughs> um. My bet. <laughs> be patient. Uh, you know, it's uh, on the job training. Don't do wing contests. Okay, best dad advice I got for you is uh, your presence is more important than your presence. So the, the stuff that you're trying to give your kids, uh, you being there is, is so much more valuable. It's so much more important. So don't work so hard that you can give them stuff that you aren't there with them. So, and don't eat hot wings with scorpion yeah. sauce. We've made it to the finish line. These guys can cross it off their bucket list. Thank you all for participating. Happy Father's Day, everyone, to all the courageous, hardworking, loving dads out there. Thank you very much. Happy Father's Day. Hopefully these guys can make it to Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Have a great day. <clears throat> you know what? I'm a man. I'm a man. No, you're not. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I'm a man. Somebody down 9-1, then when he falls over, down one again. Oh, I was four, but why did I do why that? Why did you do that again? I don't know. Ego. It was all ego. Wow. <clears throat> you just never know what you're going to see at CLC, I guess. After the, after the worship time we had, I thought, I get to preach after this. <laughs> and then I see this, and it's like, they expect me to preach after this. <laughs> but uh, it's okay to have fun in church, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Welcome, uh, everyone. Good afternoon to everyone here in the room, and good afternoon to those of you that are joining us online. We appreciate you being a part of this. And uh, we're going to dive into week number three of a four-part series uh, that we're calling Finding Purpose. If you weren't here, we talked uh, the first week about uh, finding purpose in your blessings. There's a reason that God has blessed you the way he has. Last week, we talked about finding purpose in your challenges. That wasn't near as much fun, but but we learned that there's some things that God had in store, had in mind uh, when we were being challenged. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, finding purpose in your work, in your work. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be, this is Father's Day. You've already heard that and probably knew that even before you walked in here. I, I want to be Papa today. Does that be all right? Yeah. I, I'd just like to, to talk to you uh, as a dad uh, about, God's purpose for you in the work that you do. And by the way, uh, you, uh, you, know, you may not have a job. You may be retired now. You may be a stay-at-home mom. Uh, you might be a student, and uh, you still have work. Your work as a student is to get an education, do well in school. Uh, and stay-at-home moms, my goodness, you, you, you may not get paid for it, but you have the most, most important job in the country. And uh, if you're already retired, yeah, go ahead and give them a, a hand on Father's Day. If you're retired, I'm sure there's still things that you are doing. There's ways that you're making yourself valuable to, uh, to the society around us. And so I, I'm hope, I want to talk to you, and I hope that you'll, you'll, get some, you'll glean something out of, out of these principles. Um, 
this may be the most important series of, uh, most important message of the series because, uh, you know, we spend more time on our jobs, commuting to our jobs, commuting back home from our jobs, and thinking about our jobs. You add all of those hours up, and I'm sure it's way more than you spend doing anything else. And so it, it, uh, it's important for you that you're not wasting all of that time. So let's, let's dive into it anyway. Uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 is the first verse that I want to read to you. And uh, it simply goes like this. The Lord God put the man in the Garden of Eden to work the soil and take care of the garden. That's the first time the word work ever appears in Scripture, by the way. And then I want to read Psalm 100, which verse 2 says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. And what I want to point out to you, if you're wondering what do these two verses have to do with each other, I understand your confusion. But, but believe me when I tell you that the word work in Genesis 2.15 and the word worship in Psalm 100 and verse 2 are both the exact same word in Hebrew. It's the word abad. And so we are told to abod the soil and take care of the garden. And we're told to abod the Lord with gladness. Sometimes the word abod is translated as work. And sometimes it's translated as worship. I could give you other examples besides these two. And it leaves me to conclude this much. That when I do my work well, it's worship to God. And I say that to all of you, no matter what your work is, whether you're in a factory making widgets or you're staring at a computer screen all day or you're a salesperson, it doesn't matter what your job, maybe a school teacher, but no matter what your job is, when you do your work well, God considers that worship. No matter what it is that you're doing, when you're doing a good job of it, it's like raised hands. It's like in the sanctuary I'm talking about. It's like, it's like the singing that we were doing a few minutes ago. It's worship as far as he's concerned. And so I, I want to I take you to Colossians chapter 3, if you would, and, and explore one of the most, uh, uh, one of the, the, the largest passages, I guess, in the New Testament about our work. Starting at verse 22 in the message translation, it said, Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. God wants you to do your... Especially if you want your work to be considered worship, He's saying it needs to be your best. And, and so today, I'd like... You know how much i like for you to talk back to me anyway. I'd like for you to help me to figure out... Because when, when I read that, I was thinking, what, what would I consider being my best? If I were going to give my best on my job, what would that look like? And I'll give you a couple of suggestions to kind of get us started, prime the pump a little bit. But then I'd like for you to volunteer some, some things that you would consider a part of doing your best. The, the first thing I thought of was being punctual. Uh, and part of that was, this is Father's Day, and part of that's because that's how my dad raised me. My, my father, you know, if, if we weren't about 15 minutes early for appointments or for church or whatever, we were already late. You know, that's how he lived. And so I've, I've grown up with that same pattern. Uh, so if I'm going to give my best to my job, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to be punctual. I've had some bosses that didn't seem to appreciate people coming to work 30 minutes late every single day. In fact, it seems like he let those people go. You with me? Uh, another thing I thought of is, uh, is being cheerful. I mean, I, I don't want to work with a bunch of grumps. I, I want to, if I'm going to give my best, I want to be cheerful about my work. What, what's something that would be your best? Somebody, somebody volunteer. Somebody tell me what, what best would look like on your job. Doing the right. Doing it right the first time. That's hard. <laughs> but that's your best. Doing it right the first time. You're wearing masks. I can't, I can't hear you. Consistency. Consistency. That's good. I think I wrote the word dependable, which is kind of the same thing. Yes, right here. Walking in love. Walking in love. That's, that's, a, that's a biblical principle for sure. Yeah, for sure. Someone behind him. I thought I saw a hand behind. 
I can't hear. I'm 68 years old, folks, and I've got a hearing aid in this ear. I need you to... Do what you're expected to do. Do what you're, do what you're expected to do. That's, that's always good. He said, don't just do the minimum. Do your best, but your best better include what you're expected to do. Yes. Helping out your coworkers. Helping out your coworkers. I'm going to let you finish the sermon today. I, I, you're right, in, right. You've stolen my notes already, okay? Never run away from your responsibilities. Try it one more time. Never run away from your responsibilities. Never run away from your responsibilities. You couldn't do that and be, be, be your best. Got to be responsible to do your best. Communication. Be a good communicator. Good. Huh? Encouragement. Encouragement. Commitment. Commitment. These are all good. How about uh, self-motivated? I had a boss one time. My production dipped a little bit, and, and uh, she came to me, and she said, Jerry, the, the, boss, the, yep, the bosses above me are saying, you've got to talk to Jerry and find out what's going on. I said, what, what can I do? She said, what do I need to do to motivate you? And I said, Nancy, let that be the last time we ever had this conversation. I've got three kids and a wife back at home, and every single one of them like to eat. I don't need any other motivation. That's, I've got to put food on the table. You don't have to have that conversation with me again. I am self-motivated, okay? I think that's part of doing our best. That we are. How about this one? How about being a problem solver? I promise you, your boss will appreciate the fact that you are a problem solver instead of just being, bringing the problems and dropping them in his lap if you're the kind of person that can solve the problem before he ever even knows about it. That was good, Jerry. Just keep that up. Okay, let's drop down. That was verse 22. Verse 23 says, Work from the heart for your real master for God. You know what, what strikes me about those words, that first sentence? Those are worship words. He says, work from your heart for your real master for God. And so, and remember, when I do my work well, it's worship to God. And he's using worship words to describe it. And then he goes on to say, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Your full pay is not your paycheck next Friday. No, no, your full pay doesn't come until you get your inheritance from the Lord. Then the next verse, keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. And when I read that, what jumped off the page at me was the word always. Here's the question. It's not a trick. Why does he say I need to always keep in mind that I'm serving the Lord? You might want to quit. <laughs> That's great. You might want to quit, somebody said. I think, I think it's especially important because especially on your job, if your boss has ever assigned you some menial tasks, and, you know, some stuff that you really don't want to do and you don't really think it's in your job description and you're probably tempted to say, that's not my job. Hey, are you with me? But if you can keep in mind always that you're really not working for the guy that signs your paycheck, you're really not working for the, for the company that, uh, where you're employed, but what you're really doing is working for the master. As long as you can remember that, you'll be able to give your best instead of complaining that this is not your job. Amen. Right. Amen. Keep in mind always. And then the last one, he says, the sullen, last verse, sullen servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. Amen. Drop mic, exit stage left. You know, that says it. When I do my work well, it's worship to God. And there are, there are several examples that I could have chosen to talk to you about. We'd be here all day. But, but the one that really came to my mind especially is the man named Daniel in the Old Testament. I'm not even going to take the time to read it. But in Daniel chapter 6, verses 3 through 5, you can, you can read it sometime for yourself. Uh, there were 120 provinces in the kingdom. And so each one of them had a, a leader, a president, or, or some ruler over those provinces. And then there were three men chosen to oversee those 120. Daniel was one of those top three. 
And, uh, and the Bible says that the king was thinking about promoting Daniel, or was planning to promote Daniel and put him over everything because, this is so interesting, it said because there was an excellent spirit in him. Some more religious, some more, some more worship words. And when it says that he had an excellent spirit, what it's really saying is he had a great attitude. You with me? So Daniel was unlike the rest of those guys that came to work because when he came to work, he had a great attitude about it. And so the other 122, the 120 leaders and the two guys who, besides Daniel who were over all the leaders decided that they would find fault, that they would criticize Daniel to, so the king wouldn't promote him. Have you ever had somebody on your job that was out to criticize, out to find fault with you? You don't have to raise your hand on that one. I think probably a lot of you have. Uh, here's the thing. Some people approach criticism like there's a reward for it. You know, they, they think if I can find fault, I get, I get advanced somehow. But these men gave up after a while because they said he was faithful. Another worship word. And they said, the only way we're going to be able to find fault with Daniel, get this, I can't imagine. This is his enemies now, his critics said the only way we're going to be able to find fault with Daniel is if we can find fault with him concerning a law of his God because he lives for his God. Amazing. But when you treat your work like worship as Daniel did, it's done well. And part of that equation, I just, I just want to give you a little, a little uh, detour for just a second. Part of that equation is using your gifts on your job. It's one of the things that we talk about at CLC a lot. And if you go to our growth track, the second week of our growth track, it's my favorite lesson of the four, uh, has to do with how God has wired you and how you are gifted. I had someone tell me uh, between services today, Pastor, I've been, I've been serving the Lord for over 50 years and I still don't know what my gifts are. She's excited because she's going to growth track now. She's going to find out. But let, me, let me tell you this, that, that when you are using your gifts... That's one of the ways that you shine on your job. I started to say when I was preparing this, I thought maybe I should just tell everybody, if you are not using your gifts on your job, you should probably quit tomorrow and find a new job. But I decided that would be irresponsible on my part because you do have to still pay the bills, right? Yes. You, you heard the song, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. That wasn't quite how they sang it, but I know a lot of people that, that that's, that's the truth, okay? So, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, using your gifts on your job, probably the greatest example I could offer you of that is, is a guy named Eric Little. Uh, you, he, they made a movie about his life called Chariots of Fire. How many of you have seen Chariots of Fire or you know about Eric Little? Okay, I've got a few of you do. It's, it's, been, it's been like that in each service. Uh, Eric Little was born in China because his parents were missionaries there and lived there for a number of years and then made his way back to his home of, in Scotland. He was, he was Scottish and uh, was a brilliant scholar, but he was also a, a very terrific athlete. In fact, he represented Scotland in the Olympics. Uh, his, his main event was the 100-meter 100 100 dash uh, but that particular year for the Olympics, the 100-meter dash was going to be held on a Sunday. And Eric Little was a devout Christian, and he, he was convicted that Sunday is the Lord's Day, and I'm not going to participate in a race on Sundays. The whole nation of Scotland was upset with him, sending him hate mail. They were upset thinking, you know, you're, you're not even going to represent us, and we were counting on you. You, you were favored to win the gold medal. But instead, he ran the 400 meter, which was not his main. In fact, he had never done it in, in competition before. But uh, he ran the 400 meter on a different day and won the gold medal for Scotland in the 400 meter. He was quite an athlete. But what he's really known for is this quote. His, his sister was trying to talk him out of the Olympics. She said, you know that God has called you to China. And he said, I know that God made me for a purpose. I know he made me for China. But he also made me fast. And he said, when I run, I feel his pleasure. And he went on to tell her later, he said, I don't just run for fun. I run to win. And when I win, I honor God. 
I want to tell you, when you use your gifts, you will feel God's pleasure. I can testify. And when you use your gifts well, God will receive honor from that. One of the men that, that I found as I was studying, preparing for this, I've been drawn to him several times of late. He's, he's a kind of an obscure character in the Old Testament you may never have heard of by the name of Bezalel. And in Exodus chapter 31, the Lord spoke to Moses. This is when they were preparing the, the tabernacle, the tent that they traveled with to worship after they left Egypt, the children of Israel I'm talking about. And so the Lord spoke to Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. I want to stop right there and ask you, have you ever heard of Hur? The H-U-R, Hur, okay? It's not a trick question. Uh, Hur was the grandfather of Bezalel, but that's not all he's known for. Hur is primarily known in the Old Testament because there was a time when Israel was fighting against one of their primary enemies the, uh, Am from Amalek, the Alamakites, and uh, uh, Moses was not fighting in the battle. Joshua was the commander that was leading the battle. But Moses came to the battlefield, and when he would raise his hands with the staff of God in one hand, he would raise his hands to the Lord. Amazingly, Israel would begin to prevail against Amalek. They would start to win the battle. But when Moses grew tired and his arms were heavy and he would lower his arms, the battle changed, and Amalek was winning now. And somebody observed, somebody recognized what was going on. And so they, they found a, a big stone for Moses to sit on so he wouldn't have to stand. And then Aaron, who's the brother of Moses, stood on one side. And Hur, H-U-R, stood on the other side. And the two of them, Aaron and Hur, lifted Moses' hands so he didn't grow weary. And they held his hands up and Israel prevailed and won the battle against Amalek. That's what he's known for, okay? Now, the reason that I mention him to you is because it's, this is Father's Day. That's the only reason I'm bringing him up because on, on Father's Day, I want you to recognize that this man Bezalel that we're, we're about to see what he was all about, he was the grandson of her. And I want to say today to every father in the house, and there's a lot of us in here, and to those of you who have joined us online as well, every father listening to me right now, I want you to know that, that you don't know yet what a heritage you can leave behind for your children and your grandchildren. You may never, you may never get to see what it is. I hope that you will, but you, you may never have that opportunity to see the, the, the heritage and the, the blessing that you can be to your children and your children's children and even beyond by being a godly example, by being a man like, like her, who left that heritage for his children and his descendants, that he was the man that held up the man of God's arms and was faithful in the work of God. Your faithfulness on your job not only is going to be a blessing in your life and put bread on your table, but your faithfulness on the job is also teaching your children and your grandchildren what it's like so that work is truly worship to God. Yeah. Amen. And, and the next verse... The next verse says, I have filled, God says, I have filled him, Bezalel, with the Spirit of God. And so I want to tell all of those of you in the room that you say, you know, I didn't have that kind of, of heritage. I didn't have that kind of, of blessing, you know, that legacy. Uh, my father, I never even knew him. Or uh, my grandfather, you know, I, I didn't have anything handed down to me from them. Uh, but you know what? You can change all of that because the verse that says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God. And if you have received the Holy Spirit, you can change that legacy of your family. You can change that whole, that whole line of what's going to happen after you. You can start a brand new heritage for your family. You can start a brand new legacy that's going to allow your children and your grandchildren to look back and say, my grandfather or my father taught me what it was like to serve God with excellence and for it to be worship. Not only did, did the Scripture say that he was filled with the Spirit of God, but let's look at verse 4 and 5. It's, it, God says this about Bezalel. He is a master craftsman. He's an expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving. These are all different skills. You recognize that? And mounting gemstones. Just because somebody can work with gold and silver doesn't mean that they can mount gemstones, but he could. 
and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. So I don't know who I'm talking to today. You may have said, well, you know, I'm, I'm good with my hands. I can work with my hands, but, but I, you know, I can't do those other things. Let, let me just tell you, what you are able to do, the gifts that you have received from God, when you do them well, whether you get paid for it or not, it might be a hobby for you, but when you have gifts from God and you use them well, he considers that worship, and it's just as blessed as, as if it were your paying job. Amen. Let me keep moving. Not only is your work, not only does it become worship to God when it's done right, but the second half of this, I want to I kind of shift things and tell you that, that your work is also important because of those around you, okay? In uh, Christmas Eve of 1910, this is, this is one of my favorite mission stories. Uh, William Booth, if you've heard that name, General William Booth was the founder of the Salvation Army. And it's really unfortunate that a lot of us, all we know about the Salvation Army is they're the people outside the stores on Christmas and they're ringing bells and they're hoping that you'll throw in some money to, to help the poor, to help the needy. And that's, that probably is what they are primarily known for today. They are, they are a charity that is helping the underprivileged. It's amazing what they do. But that's not how they started. Uh, William Booth was one of the greatest soul winners of his day and probably as passionate when it came to missions as anyone who's ever walked on earth. He's the founder of the Salvation Army. And when they started, it was a whole lot more about reaching lost people and introducing them to Jesus than it was about collecting money, being fundraisers. And, and so every year after their Christmas season, every year they would, uh, they would have a big convention and... Uh, in 1910, William Booth was in such poor health. He was near his death, actually, and he was in such poor health that he knew he couldn't make the trip to be present for the convention. And uh, someone close to him said, General, why don't you send a telegram to everyone? And so he agreed to do that. And when everyone gathered for the convention, thousands of Salvation Army workers, uh, it was always the highlight of the convention when they got to hear a, a message from William Booth but the, the moderator stood up and said, I'm sorry, but, but uh, William Booth is not going to be able Booth, William Booth is not going to be able to be with us for the convention this year. His health is too poor to allow him to travel. And you could feel, the, onlo the onlooker said, you could feel the wave of disappointment sweep over the entire convention floor. But then the moderator said, but he did send us a telegram. And so everyone waited with anticipation. He opened up the envelope and he read the telegram from William Booth that simply said, Others signed General William Booth. And at first they were kind of stunned, you know, just a one-word telegram. Of course, part of the reason for that was you paid for the telegram by the word, and William Booth wanted to be frugal so more money would go to reach people than to be spent for this message. But the more they thought about it, the more they realized what he was telling them is that's the whole purpose of the Salvation Army. That's what we live for. That's why we serve. It's, all, it's not about us. It's all because of others. And I want to tell you today that the purpose of your job is not just to pay your bills. Your reason for being on that job, first of all, is to honor God through your work. And it becomes worship. But it's also about others who surround you. People who perhaps in many cases don't know Jesus. And it doesn't matter whether they are clients or customers or co-workers. It doesn't really matter. But when you, because you know Jesus, you have the privilege and the assignment to make him known. That's the first thing Brent taught us on the first week of this series. That for all of us, our purpose is to know God and make him known. And I want to tell you that when I do my work well, I make God known. Yeah. Let me close in Isaiah chapter 50, which says, The Master God, this is verse 4, has given me a well-taught tongue, so I know how to encourage tired people. Let me, let me call a quick time out and just ask, do you know any tired people on your job? Are you the tired person you're thinking about? <laughs> okay. You know some tired people. 
it just might be, I, I really want to stay with my topic, but it, it just might be that one of your purposes is to look around you for people who are tired, for people who are discouraged, and maybe a word from, he, he talks about a well-taught tongue the master blessed me with. And so maybe, maybe your purpose tomorrow is to find that person or persons who's really weary and speak a good word to them. That was free. It says, he wakes me up in the morning, wakes me up, opens my ears to listen as one ready to take orders. The master God opened my ears and I didn't go back to sleep. I didn't pull the covers back over my head. And here's what I want to bring, bring to you from Isaiah 50. And that is Isaiah 50 is actually a messianic prophecy. And if you don't know what I mean by that, uh, what I'm saying is it's not just a prophecy to Israel or maybe even a prophecy to us. Isaiah 50 is a prophecy about Jesus Christ hundreds of years before he was born. You, you remember that that happens. I mean, Isaiah 53, probably most everyone has heard, even if you don't know the address, you, you probably have heard, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. That was Isaiah prophesying about Jesus hundreds of years before he was born. But so is this passage. And so what this prophecy is saying is that God opens Jesus' ear and he didn't didn't pull the covers over his head. He, He received what he needed and he didn't go back to sleep. And so I thought to myself when I read that, I thought, when did... When did God open Jesus' ears? When did, when did Jesus hear something during the crucifixion that would, that would change situations? And, I, and I, I went back and read. I read where Pilate spoke up and said, I'll have him flogged before releasing him. Jesus didn't respond to that at all. The people said, crucify him, crucify him. Again, Jesus was silent. The crowd mocked him and said, you saved others, save yourself. He didn't respond to that. The soldiers scoffed and said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. Not a word out of Jesus. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, said, you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. Jesus didn't didn't budge. The other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you've been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Ding, 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 ding. Jesus' ears were open at that moment. And he replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Could I just tell you today that your purpose, I, I, I hope this will make you think on your job this week. But maybe your purpose at work is to have ears open to hear someone who needs God. I doubt they'll come to you and say, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? It would be great if it did, but I doubt it'll be like that. But you may hear them say, you may even hear them talking to someone else. They're not even addressing you directly. But they're, it's what they say, it could be the beginning of a spiritual conversation where you would have the opportunity to share your faith with them. There may be someone on your job who's broken and hungry for God. And instead of you pulling the covers up and going back to sleep, it may be that God will open your ear to hear and respond. Every service today, I've I've ended it with that, just, just praying for people on their jobs, praying that you'll have an ear to hear. But early in the service today, while I was sitting down here at the front, I just, I just had that sense that, that comes from time to time that maybe, maybe I'll practice what I've preached to you because this is my job. And I think what I heard today was that there were people in this room and people online, both, that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Maybe you came as a guest today or maybe you're here often but you would admit that you you don't have a real relationship with Jesus. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, bow your head with me if you would. And if there's something tugging at your heart today, 
may not have had anything to do with this message. It may have been hearing the testimony of the young man that we baptized. It may have been something that happened during the worship set. But if there's something tugging at your heart today and you recognize that you need Jesus in your life, or maybe you're one of those who served the Lord at one time, but you've strayed, You've just, you've just gone astray and you're not walking in fellowship with him today. I'm inviting you to pray this prayer with me wherever you are, in the room or online. Would you say something like this? Lord Jesus, I know that I've fallen short of your plan. I've sinned against you. But I believe that you died and rose again so that I could be forgiven and free. So I'm asking you to come into my heart right now. Wash me from every sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to serve you the rest of my life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for forgiving my sin. In Jesus' name. Hey, can we congratulate those who prayed that prayer with us today? Pastor Brent's going to come and tell you about the next steps because we want to see you go on and walk with the Lord after that decision. Would you welcome him as he comes? Such a, such a good word, Pastor Jerry. If, uh, if you did pray that prayer with, uh, with PJ just a moment ago, uh, I want you to text the word LIFE to 708-998-4516 because that was the starting point of, of so much that God wants to do in you and through you, and we have some resources to help you walk this decision out. So it isn't just something you prayed one day in a church service, but it's a new life that you live. And so again, just text the word LIFE to 708-998-4516. If you're ready for the blessing, why don't you go ahead and stand. Before we dismiss, though, I just want to let you know, for dads, we got you the greatest gift ever. Right outside in the lobby, we got some chicken wings and some root beer on tap for the dads in the house. Because I know you don't need another knickknack, but you could use some chicken wings, right? Uh, so enjoy that out in the lobby. If you are new to CLC, don't forget we'd love to connect with you. Text WELCOME to 708 998 45 one, six. And if you're ready for the blessing, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless. Happy Father's Day. Have a great day.